Today I want to share with you how I created this cool uh, background gradient effect. Uh, so you can see these uh, circles are moving around. One of them is uh, following the mouse movement in kind of uh, e with easing, with some easing, right? They move seemingly random. Uh, so it's just uh, using CSS animations and uh, some SVG effects to make them blend when they come close to each other as you can see. So I think this is pretty cool effect. Maybe you will learn some uh, interesting tricks. So let's first create a new uh, project with Vit. Uh, I find it very easy to set up. That's why uh, let's call it animated BG background, right? So it's vanilla TypeScript. Uh, basically, the only part uh, that is uh, using like TypeScript or JavaScript is uh, the movement of the mouse, like, and tracking. Uh, so otherwise, it's plain CSS most of the time. It's npm install. Okay, next I will add SAS to use a CSS. And let's open it with WebStorm. Really like WebStorm. Uh, let's get rid of some stuff that is uh, used here. The, the default project. We don't need any of this except for import and let's rename it to SCSS straight away. Right, so it renames it here as well. I don't need this. Uh, let's leave this as this. And okay, here we have app div, and we don't need any styles for now. So just let's start uh, to make sure it runs. So it doesn't run, ah, because we don't have start script. I just prefer using start over dev. Most of the time it's just more intuitive. So it's basically the alias to uh, dev. So yeah, yeah, now we have this blank, blank project. Let's start uh, by defining our containers uh, first for gradient background and then container for the moving gradients. We'll need it later uh, to put the effect uh, we, we've seen. Let's add the gradient and let's move to styling. So first let's reset the margins and paddings of HTML and body. Set the font family, we'll need it. Uh, set some uh, root variables. So those will serve as our uh, linear background, the actual background, and those are the colors for uh, moving circles, gradient circles. Uh, notice that I uh, don't specify them as RGB. I just uh, use comma separated values for red, green, and blue. Uh, this is needed to later uh, use the same variable with different transparencies. I will use RGBA, put those as variable and specify the opacity value. Uh, notice also uh, circle size and blending. Uh, this is for later. So let's set gradient background, uh, normal uh, viewport size, position absolute, overflow hidden and top left corner. And let's set the linear gradient for it. Let's see what we've got. All right, this is the gradient. Okay, uh, let's move on uh, to container. Uh, let's just specify its width and height to 100%. And this VG uh, display known, we will use SVG filters later. And for now, uh, we just hide it. Like we will hide it later as well, because SVGs, we don't use it for display purposes, we use it for filtering purposes. 
g1 position absolute background radial gradient so it starts uh, in the center and with 80% uh, opacity uh, using the color variable we specified and adds and uh, tra fully trans uh, transparent uh, occupying 50% of the size with no repeat uh, width and height the circle size we specified at 80% uh, so it basically occupies 80% of the page but ending at 50% so we don't see this cut edges cut off edges so top and left we adjust it a bit so it's at the very center of the page uh, so it's basically offset left 50% uh, of the page minus uh, circle size divided by two so it's at the very center opacity one and let's add blend mode we specified it as a hard light so it's uh, the way it uh, blends with the background and uh, later it will also blend with other circles so now we can see it looks like this let's add a few more so i added g2 g3 g4 g5 uh, and make in a similar fashion just specify different colors 80% of opacity uh, ending at 50% some more uh, let's add some offsets as well so it's uh, not in the center this time yeah so let's see what we've got so we got few gradients we uh, still see some edge cutting like because it's um, like like if we let's say add 30 percent here instead of 50 it won't cut the edge like if we add 100 percent then it would be very cut off okay so we got those gradients uh, now let's make the move i added uh, move in circle animation so it rotates uh, like right now uh, it would rotate around center but we would later offset uh, the transform origin so it rotates around different point move vertical animation so uh, this is just rotation like 50% 180 100% uh, 360 this moves from uh, top to bottom and back and this moves horizontally from left to right and back so let's add animation to the first circle it would move vertically and let's see how it looks not very visible but yeah now it's it's gone to top and it will return let's add some more to see it's better uh, like second gradient it will be moving in circle and uh, so that it doesn't move around its own center we offset uh, its uh, transform origin minus 400 percent to the left so let's see yeah it's moving quite slowly but here it is okay reverse infinite this time so this one uh, move in circle with a bit longer duration and infinite as well this is important so it loops the animation loops transform origin uh, like we offset it as well move horizontal and another last animation it will be moving in circle with some easing so now we see circles are moving around doesn't look that good at the moment but we'll fix that okay so uh, now let's add interactive the one that will follow the mouse so we add interactive uh, gradient here set some styles so uh, same like color interactive we have this variable specified and mix blend mode basically all the same logic as before and now we need to add some 
JavaScript, TypeScript, right? Let's add a uh, listener for the doc document get loaded. Uh, interactive bubble, that's inter bubble we call it. Uh, get the selector interactive. Specify some variables that we will need later. So add mouse move listener. TG, X, TGY uh, are the variables uh, that the position, uh, the target position of the circle, like basically where our mouse is at. So we add this function move. Uh, we uh, set a current X and current Y in a way that it uh, uh, infinitely becomes closer and closer to the position of the mouse. Uh, so you can adjust these parameters 20, 20 is basically how much it's eased. Uh, so easing is like this, the larger the value, uh, the longer is the easing towards the target point. Let's call this move function. And we request animation frame uh, to make it move every time. Let's see. So you see this circle is following mouse in a smooth fashion. Request animation frame is generally preferred way to do uh, this kind of animations. Uh, if we just uh, move the circle with the mouse, it's going to be just chunky and clunky and wouldn't look that nice. So we have an ability to set some easing here. Now uh, we can add the filters finally. So uh, this is a SVG filter, like very cool way uh, to specify different uh, tr transformations. Like it's, it's like a shader basically that takes uh, like the source graphic, which is uh, can be a HTML element uh, and uh, put some transformations into colors and blending. So what we do is here we have a Gaussian blur uh, of 10 uh, and then we have trans color matrix. Uh, this is identity mat matrix mostly, but for alpha channel, we have multiplication by 18 and minus eight. So uh, this creates this uh, effect. Let's, let's see how it looks. Uh, we have also blending like with the original graphic. Uh, so let's add this filter and uh, add some blur on top. So this goo effect, uh, it makes them blend like this. So if they get close to each other, you'll see they are kind of morphing together. Yeah, this already looks nice. And let's add some text finally. So just text container bubbles, go to styles yeah, and just set that index, 100% uh, of viewport, flex, and just some basic styles and a little bit of shadow. Here is the final result. So nice thing that circles are uh, moving seemingly random. So although uh, most of the animations, except the, for interactive circle are defined in CSS, it creates a nice effect. You can play around with different values. Like for example, if I uh, disable blur, it looks like this, which also kind of interesting effect. But it creates a bit of artifact. So yeah, like this is the morph morphing of SVG filter. You can read more about SVG filters uh, in uh, MDN website, for example. Uh, you can create really cool effects with them.